I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, you're going to learn how to wire up battery voltage monitoring on your Eachine Wizard X220. The Eachine Wizard comes from the factory completely unable to monitor its own battery voltage. And that's kind of a big deal because if you over discharge your battery, then you're going to damage it. And you really don't have to do it more than one or two times and the battery really takes a hit in its performance. Now, a simple thing you can do is to buy a VBAT monitoring thing that plugs into the balance port and it starts beeping when the battery gets too low. But what a hassle that is the flight controller has the ability to monitor voltage and it has the ability to have a beeper built in so why didn't they wire it this way from the factory oh well what do you let's just do it ourselves we can do it it's not hard i'll show you how one more thing to say before we get started and that is that the way i've soldered my receiver to the flight controller is not how you should do it number one the way i've done telemetry actually doesn't work and number two you don't need to direct solder your, your receiver to the flight controller. I talk about this in my initial setup video in more detail. The bottom line is don't install your receiver the way you see that I've installed mine. The next thing you're going to need to do is wire up the VBAT monitoring and potentially also the buzzer. And unfortunately, there isn't really a great place to get VBAT. Um, well, the, the easiest place to get VBAT is from the obviously the bat main battery lead. But the problem is that's a pretty big joint, and uh, if you're a beginner and maybe you don't have the greatest soldering iron or the greatest soldering iron skills, you can have a hard time with that and get yourself into a little bit of trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try not to reflow this whole joint. I'm going to add a little bit of fresh solder on top, just a little blob of fresh solder on top there uh, without reflowing the whole joint and, and flowing it in. And then I'm going to try and just sort of stick my wire to that blob of fresh solder that I added. And that worked okay. Uh, I made that look easy. Um, I'm not sure how easy you're going to find it. Uh, you have to have the right amount of temperature. It's actually better to do this with a little bit of a cold iron. Um, I'm set at 750 Fahrenheit right now. Um, it'll prevent you from flowing this, this whole joint and releasing this wire. You don't want to leave the iron on there very long and put a lot of heat in there. That's your, your goal is to ju just flow that little bit of solder you put on top. Now this is a terrible joint. This is terrible soldering, but I feel like for what we're trying to accomplish, it's okay. If, if this joint comes loose and we lose our VBAT monitoring, the copter is not going to fall out of the air. acceptable and then we're going to run this over to these pads right here which are the battery voltage pads and you're going to want to make sure as you reassemble this that all the wires are going where they're supposed to be going so that you can put the sidewalls back on without a problem. Where do the sidewalls go? Yeah, okay. So it looks like these need to go outside there. That's gonna go there, yep, yep, yep. Okay. Leave yourself a little slack on these wires. There's no reason to shorten them up unnecessarily. Um, you remember, you may need to pull this board off at some point. And when you do, you'll be glad that you've got a little bit of extra slack. So I'm just going to stick this on here upside down so I can easily get at these solder pads. It's just going to hold it in place for me. we got VBAT minus. And plus. And 
même trace. Okay, so now we should have VBAT monitoring when we power up. And now that you've got VBAT monitoring wired up, the next thing to do is to install your buzzer so the copter can beep, beep, beep at you when your battery voltage gets too low. And here's the part where some of you are going to hate me in the comments. I lost the footage of wiring up the buzzer. But, oh, come on. Forgive me for not recreating it. It's so simple to wire up. If you did the VBAT, you could definitely do the buzzer. Look, here's the buzzer pad. There's minus and a positive pad. The buzzer has one leg marked with a plus. It's also the longer leg. There's a little tip for you. In electronic components, the long leg is always the positive leg. I think so. If that's not right, you'll tell me in the comments. You'll hate me for that too. So you're just going to wire it up to that header right there. Don't stick the legs of the buzzer directly into those uh, through holes because they're too close together and the legs will get all bent up. Take about a one or one inch or inch and a half, uh, three, four centimeters for those of you who measure in centimeters, and uh, length of wire and solder it to those pads and then solder the buzzer legs to the wire. Wrap that in a little bit of heat shrink or something to keep it from shorting out. See, that's so, it's sounding less and less simple the longer I describe it. I know you can do it. Anyway, that's going to close this video out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video and the other videos in this playlist. Oh, by the way, these videos are in a playlist. Check the video description down in the bottom. There's more videos in this playlist uh, where I go over all a whole bunch of other stuff about the Eosheen Wizard. I hope these videos have helped you get the most out of the Eosheen Wizard, getting as much value as you can for your $140. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, happy flying. Happy flying. Happy flying. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, happy flying.